Hello everyone. And uh, Hello. Hello. Yeah. Uh, today uh, I have to speak English. I cannot speak Korean, so I'll make it a little slow and about uh, introduce some um, updates about Chinese startup ecosystem um, in the current two years. All right. So about DT Capital and uh, maybe some of uh, you heard this name and uh, currently we are very aggressive in Korea and now we are one of the uh, very top investors in China and we have 1.8 billion US under management and our limited partners includes Walmart and Goldman Sachs and uh, several China listed companies and several local companies and now we already have almost uh, 10 companies in Korea and uh, today, actually, Smart Study is one of our portfolio company, and B2Link is one of our portfolio company, and we have my music taste as well, and uh, we have several more. So last week we closed two more deals. So now we have ten companies in Korea. So uh, in terms of stage, we have full stage coverage from very early stage, from C stage. We have our own incubator in Hangzhou, where the, the headquarters of uh, Alibaba. And then to the pre-IPO stage, so we have very few stage coverage. Okay, very brief introduction about DD Capital. And uh, now I am the director of DD Capital. I used to work for HSBC for two years and now for, for DD Capital for almost seven years. I uh, charted the investment in Korea. And this is a very overview about the updates of the uh, current two years of Chinese ecosystem. And uh, so, yeah, so now actually China is one of the, we think it, it is another Silicon Valley. And it, it is topping the global startup growth. Now daily uh, we have 4,000 new startups generating in China so everywhere. So everybody is doing startups. It is a good thing, and uh, sometimes it's, it, it is bad things, but anyway, uh, we're having so many choices, so many people are doing startups, smart people, not smart people, anyway. And uh, <laughs> startups, you know, they are trying to live on the ecosystem of the internet giant. This is extremely, I say, this is one of the biggest updates currently in China, because uh, two years ago, every startup is trying to uh, persuade the investors that they want to be the next Alibaba or next Tencent. But now things are changing uh, so fast that everybody trying to leave on the ecosystem of Taobao or WeChat. Instead of want to be next to them, I will give you some more updates about this. And the internet giants started to be the main players in the investment industry. So they are, now is, uh, in China they are I would say they are the largest competitor for the PMDC firms, like the capital, because they are very aggressively investment. They, they have very aggressively investment everywhere, in every sector, in every stage, from very early stage, a C stage, to very late stage. Even you know they invest YG and SM, respectively by Alibaba and uh, Tencent. So uh, the last thing is that the environment of uh, China investment industry that everybody is trying to move to early stage because like Pat just mentioned, the valuation is super high. Yeah, you can see some numbers there. Uh, I'll give some very general glance of what uh, this kind of giant company is doing. This is uh, a one year ago Tencent uh, ecosystem image, they're too small Factors, but you can have a glance how many companies do they, do they have now. Maybe they have 30% more companies in every sector, from IoT to oh, I'm sorry. from IoT to fintech to e-healthy or you know logistics everywhere, car, auto, any place you can you, you, you can imagine, and they have their own tools to support all of the startups in their ecosystem. So Tencent, they got a double hander plan. Double hander plan means uh, they want to invest uh, 
uh, they want to invest uh, Henry, Henry kind of like uh, Henry uh, like 10 billion RMB1 to many companies and they hope uh, in the future there will be 100, uh, 100 companies uh, have that valuation over 10 billion, uh, 10 billion uh, uh, RMB, uh, over to, uh, 10 billion RMB1. So this is a kind of a huge plan to invest a lot of uh, startups. And another thing that Tencent now actually the largest uh, innovation spaces operator in China. They got 25 cities in uh, in China have their have their innovation space, kind of like co-work space, but they can leverage all of the Tencent resource within the space. I heard that uh, by the end of this year they will have more than 30 spaces, and uh, they have over 500. Thousand square meters innovation space in China, and we got a lot of uh, uh, cooperation with them now. Uh, this is an Alibaba's image uh, one year ago. Now it's maybe totally different. So ecosystem actually is really interesting work, and uh, actually Alibaba um, and Tencent they're, uh, they're they're largely different from these two companies. That actually Alibaba is kind of an ecosystem driven company, so they focus all of the resources in for building their own ecosystem. So now Alibaba and Tencent's ecosystem almost uh, means Chinese startup ecosystem, means a lot for, for them. So this is kind of works that I found from the annual report of Alibaba. They have, there's, actually their strategy is just one sentence, they tell about their ecosystem. They want to expand their ecosystem and help all of the startups or the company to invest growth in their ecosystem. Well, let's talk about some details. So, why this kind of things are hap uh, are happening that people want to leave on the you know giant ecosystem in that in the current year actually uh, like Tencent and Weibo and Alibaba actually there the traffic there turned to be the infrastructure of the Chinese internet uh, environment. You can see the numbers that we China now have that monthly active user of over 760 million. That means everything. That actually, that is the traffic. People, every uh, uh, daily they use WeChat more than five hours. And they open more than 20 times per day. So that, that means people leave on WeChat. And uh, yesterday, I remember yesterday, there, there, there's a video that made by news, uh, New York uh, New York Daily, or, or what did it get? Super popular in YouTube. They're telling what you can do in WeChat. Actually, WeChat can you can do everything in WeChat. So and QQ actually also Tencent's uh, uh, software. They got uh, even more. They got eight uh, eight hundred seventy million MOU for QQ and other numbers. And uh, Alibaba they got four hundred to million. A huge numbers. But that means now you still want to compete with this kind of giant, it's impossible. Actually, they are telecom companies now. They are, you know, they, they are SK now. You have to use the internet, now you have to use their traffic. And, uh, yes, they give a lot of support to, you know, for the startups leave on this kind of uh, uh, ecosystem. You can find, the one of the example is the mobile payment. And uh, both uh, Ali, Alibaba and Tencent, they got super good and really good to use mobile payment facility. And you can find the numbers there, and it's a super high number. And one example is that WeChat got in the last uh, 2016 Spring Festival, within uh, less than one week, WeChat got 32 billion WeChat. Hongbao is the kind of a right packet for a little gift money to each other. 32 billion. It is six times, uh, nine times the last year for this kind of super big company as possible. So that means the startups is really easy to find a way to use free traffic for social network uh, from social network and very easy to you know monetize, monetize their traffic through this kind of uh, really easy to use mobile payment tools. Yeah, this is uh, what I mentioned and. Based on this kind of uh, traffic, the, the traffic change, uh, what is the, the environment of traffic changing? And you can find there are a lot of really great companies generating uh, from this kind of uh, 
ecosystem. So WeChat Ticket actually is a ticket master on WeChat. It's a, the name is kind of WeChat Ticket, but it's a startup. So now the valuation is over 1.5 billion US dollars, 100% based on WeChat. And uh, the third company, uh, the name is Yitiao Family, is one video, they update one video per day. So now, only in WeChat, it is only in WeChat, kind of like one video channel in WeChat, now their, their valuation is super high as well. And uh, we got some fashion companies uh, have their traffic from Weibo. Actually, Weibo is Alibaba's company now. So and then they monetize their 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 traffic in Taobao Store. Now they're they're doing pretty pretty well as well. So you can feel like what is happening in China for all of the startups. And. Uh, there are several other things that I want to update to you that you can see how uh, how the how fast this uh, Chinese startups is growing and uh, who is doing this and you feel like what is the infrastructure plus the capital and plus the right on people can generate. So the what uh, the, the first is DD actually it is China Uber and now uh, last month and uh, Uber and uh, then two weeks ago. Uber and Uber China and Didi they just combined. So actually Didi is the very first company to have the investment from Tencent, Alibaba and Baidu. Because Baidu is the investor of uh, Uber. So after a combination, after the, the, the merge, now they have both the three companies at their shareholder. So they got 40 million daily order. Uh, actually it's, it, it's, it's larger than Uber. And uh, they raised over 10 billion US dollar. So now their their value is super high. But what is more important that the founder is born uh, 2000, uh, it is nine it is 30 33 years old. Yeah so it's 1983 born and the company is established in 2012. And oh actually the largest food delivery uh, company in China. Very young founder. The founder is 21 uh, 31 years old. And it is also Tencent, Alibaba, and Didi. And Didi invested in this company as well. So all of these uh, two companies actually, they growing very fast in the past two or three years. They raised most of the money in the past two years. So again, <coughs> give you a glance at what is happening here. Actually, most of the payments, almost 90% of the payment is through the Tencent WeChat payment or Ali payment. Ali payment. So that is, and uh, for Elm, actually, most of the traffic comes from the social network traffic as well. You can feel what is changing, what is happening in China for this kind of uh, really fast growing startups. This is another update for you know what is happening uh, from the last year. That um, in every sector, the number one company, that, actually they're all startups, most of them are less than seven years old. And uh, the number one and number two, they are combining together. And uh, I didn't put the name back, but every all the ten companies you'll see here, they got it back from Tencent or Alibaba. But anyway, now there are one companies now. So DD, Pi or all of these sectors from taxi, group buy, or online marketing service, online travel, e-fashion, uh, e-commerce, uh, e they're all combined together. So the first one, uh, the largest one, uh, and the second one. The, this train actually is, um, you can see that because of the very high valuation of the late stage companies, the, the, the valuation is too high. So that means they have to combine together to save the money they raise and uh, to compete together and then raise new money. So this is another glance of the you know, Chinese uh, market. Yeah, I'll, uh, very quick uh, updates on uh, what I feel like um, how to, how to uh, maybe my suggestion to Korean startups and uh, this industry that uh, globalization actually is the top topic for Korean startups. Actually, this is the uh, top standard that for us to screen out uh, potential companies to invest that we need to see if the team is that very young and have the international cultural team that can work 
in the mind of international international mind instead of you know just a, you know English speaking they have to have the mind to to success out of Korea and uh, the last one is that uh, how to say the flat organization fast ex execution to to execution to adapt the most dynamic market that means if the companies want to go to China because in China everything just changing so fast in the past you know two years that we have to work almost 20 hours per uh, per day and seven day per week to you know to catch up this trend so for all the startups uh, especially for the Korean startups or foreign startups who want to into the China market they must make decision very very fast that would do not uh, they, they, do not have any time to you know to doubt about this month. They have to you know move very fast to test and adjust their 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 strategy. Oh, they have more. And okay, the last thing is that uh, I still think as an international fund like Deep Capital, we really help a lot for all of the companies we invest in Korea. Uh, for smart study to link or my music test, we really do a lot of things for them to in China. So have uh, investment from uh, an international fund is really one of the way for them to start business overseas. So I really hope to cooperate with more, you know, print VC or uh, VC firms or P firms to invest more uh, companies together. Yeah, that's it. Thanks. <laughs>
you mean Chinese government is trying to protect the startups company? Yeah. Or uh, actually, I don't think so. <laughs> the, the startups in China actually they have the shortest lifetime in the world. They averagely they just I think currently from last year all the new startups their lifetime is less than one year. So nobody is protecting them. So they they are dying. So <laughs> I think um, globalization you cannot forbid the globalization. So, um, like global mega IT corporations like Facebook and Google, they want to try to go to the Chinese market. And how do you think of that? Actually, I I think Google's uh, leave or how to say I I I never think Google or Facebook can success in China. Actually, China is so different. The culture and uh, you know, uh, even for the startups, the competition is really fierce. And the example I just gave that uh, two days ago, that New uh, New York Times newspaper they really uh, they released a video about WeChat. Actually, WeChat we think is much much better than message from Facebook. You can do everything in WeChat. So now WeChat is the kind of like the Windows in mobile phone in China. So that means the competition in China is really fierce. That you gotta have very local team and the local CEO for this kind of business. I mean, to see the the, the app or kind of like this kind of business. And of course, they need some DNA, some of DNA from foreign country. But the leading team must be very localized. So that means now Google and Facebook, they are 100 percent, how to say, 100 percent foreign companies. They are all of their hats are in the U.S. They, they won't know China's, uh, Chinese market, but now if the new startups, for example, like Smart Study or other of our portfolio companies, one of their co-founders even leave in China with their family, they want to become Chinese. I mean, this is the trend that maybe they have the opportunity to success in China.